joking. What's up, guys? Welcome back to episode 20 of Grand App Show. Run it, run it, run it edition. The run it edition, episode 20, pretty big milestone. Um, so for this one, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be switching it completely, and instead of having a guest speaker, it's just uh, Brandon and myself just back us. to it. I don't think we've done that in a long time. No, we haven't. It's this is gonna be interesting. I wonder when's the last episode we, uh, Charles, can you link up the last episode right here, the last time that we did it just Brandon and myself? And then maybe we can play a little link to it as well. Oh yeah. So we'll do a, a Q and A. So I posted um, a question. So if you guys have any mm -hmm. questions for episode twenty, let us know. Brands on my Facebook page you're gonna go check it out. Yes, let's read these off. We have some pretty good ones. I like these. So from Joseph Monahan. Joseph. Joseph. Joseph asks. What do you think Jesus. about remote work? Is there time when Grand Apps will hire remote teammates, nation or worldwide? What do you think? Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. So, I mean, I like in-house because it's you can build an easier culture yeah. within the company. And to be honest, how we got to where we are is we started within our city, within Grand Rapids which makes it easier for clients to actually come into the office, feel out our team, get comfortable, build relationships. So I think having that from the beginning, even being able to go to coffee shops and have meetings and be able to see the team you're working yeah. with was big. You yeah, know? especially for our industry too, because yeah. we're, we're an agency, so like marketing, advertisement, you gotta have that kind of face-to-face -face if you wanna meet a business owner, decision maker, right, that wants to do that. I think so. I think, you know, you could scale up and have people work remotely once you hit that. Like, let's say for example, all right, let's say that you hit like a really big account and then that account needs like, you know, let's say it's like Pepsi or something like that, right? Then you're gonna have to task out and delegate like different things. So if somebody wants to work from home, that's totally fine. You know, I would say that they could do that. Mm -hmm. But I think when you're in kind of build mode and you're really growing the company, you want majority of the people to be actually in the environment. Um, and it's not to like manage them, overlook it. Honestly, it's for to build the culture. It's mm -hmm. for motivation. I mean, because when you wake up out of bed, like, do you really want to work by yourself that hard? Like, mm -hmm. do you have that much motivation? Or if you come into a team, and you're like, oh, that person's working. I'm work. Okay, I'm gonna do my task. And you kind of like actually see the people's faces who's dependent on you. You know. Mm -hmm. So like, if you have to do, let's say they're working in a team together. If I'm remote and I'm doing my job, Brandon could call me or text me like, hey, where's this at? And I'll be like, oh, here it is. But if I come and see you every day, it's like, I know I can't be putting that off to go watch like another episode of House of Cards yep. because I have to work for you right here in the time that we have. So, you know, I, I think eventually we will get to that point. I love the idea and the aspect of it, but I think um, in this very point where we are, it's gonna be mainly in-house and mm -hmm. um, in building that up. Yeah, currently, Thanks for the question. She asked kind of the same. She said, will Grand Ass be opening more locations outside of Michigan? Actually, no. It's actually a different question. So ha having kind of remote sites then. So it would still be yep. you know, Grand Ass, but having other locations Absolutely. outside I of want, Michigan. Yeah, I want, I want outside of like, Michigan 100%. I honestly I want to have like 10 offices around the United States. Um, that's, like, that's just what I want. Like I want to have, I mean, wherever, like let's say we get a, a huge client somewhere, then I want to build up a little remote office around them to have people go back and forth. Mm -hmm. And then you could start building up throughout that city, wherever you are, to get other clients that are in that demographic too. Mm -hmm. So I absolutely, I want multiple offices. So what do you think? Probably like a college town, you know, will be a prime office. So where do you think? Where, wherever, wherever, wherever the clients are. Wherever the, if the uh, clients the are in are. Iowa and we're doing beef company with uh, farming, then we're going to have a Grand Apps Iowa office. That'd be interesting. It's not that in Iowa. I'm not moving there. But we'll have <laughs> I'll be there visiting and doing it. We'll do online meetings. See how things are going there. But yeah, I'll go there face to face. But I'm not gonna live there. No, no that'd be no. That'd be great in Iowa. Sorry, I Iowa don't like people. That. All right, so definitely we'll do remote locations outside of Michigan. All right, so Christopher William Kaminsky. So Christopher, what do you what do you attribute the awesomeness of Grand Apps to? I'll let you kick it off. Make sure it's face. <laughs> nah. Charles is the great. That kind of goes it's back awesome. to culture, man. It really does. Yeah. It goes back to our culture and our values. And honestly, what we work for. We work for. Can you show them, Charles? For need. Can yeah, you show the values. Can Pan. You? 
to that. Mm -hmm. Just show them the values. It's fine if you get if you get this other camera in your setup. So those are some of the values we have. You can't probably see all of them, but um, yeah. So our six core values. One of them, um, Gandhi, is hidden behind the light box. I bet Gandhi never in his mind would ever think he's hidden behind a light box. But it'd be <laughs> <a light> box. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Gandhi. Like, I don't belong here. What, you got? what are you guys doing? So that's yeah. So those are the values we got. But no, because right. I think it's it kind of goes back to um, I mean yes, obviously our values, but we our business is here for for need. Right? When we reach out to businesses, our ultimate goal is to better that business. We were actually just out the other day having having a dinner and we're at this new place within Grand Rapids and we were like, man, I want oh, their yeah. social account just because th their food is great, their customer service is even better. I went there a couple of times. The third time I went there, they knew what I ordered, what my side order was, everything. Yeah. Real personal, real friendly. So we're like, man, I just want to see this, this business blow up. I want to see them become this the, the best shop in Grand Rapids, you know, so we really are out here to to help businesses grow That is our ultimate goal, which that being our ultimate goal creates our ultimate Creates our awesome culture which creates our awesome values and that's what I put our awesomeness Yeah, I, th I think awesomeness like it comes out of the people like the people who you're working with the people who you're working for mm -hmm. Like we have awesome clients. I think that speaks you know, immensely for our company and what we do. Um, because I mean, if you just have a client who's just a really shitty person, they are, they're out there, you know, like yeah. they're just not nice people or they're not good to work with, you know, then it's, I mean, it's gonna, it's gonna trickle down effect. Cause if that client's always mad at you, they're yelling at you, you know, somebody else yells at somebody yeah. else and it just creates a bad environment. Um, so your awesomeness level goes down a little bit. Mm -hmm. but I think just the culture that we have in here, um, you know, it's again, it starts on top down. So, you know, just leading by example and just being a good person. Um, I mean, I think that's what kind of contributes to it, right? Yeah, no, absolutely, definitely. And leading by example, um, if you want your office to be a certain way, especially yeah, if you want to be if, awesome, if you're you're make it there, awesome. Yeah, yeah like, <laughs> simple. Here it is. If you want it shitty, be there. shitty. Like, make yeah. it shitty, you know? That's it. What about, uh, Charles, can you read some of those? Oh, on Facebook okay. Live. You can just kind of scroll to I love how excited you guys are. All right. Uh, how many bad app ideas do you get weekly? <laughs> Who said that? Uh, from Jeremy Schultz. Jeremy, how many send an idea? So in? app ideas. Um, <laughs> no, I mean we get we get a lot of app ideas. We actually just wrote a blog post and it talked about like the cost of an Uber-like app. Oh yeah. Because what happened was with the app market, how the app market shifted was before people even knew about apps or wanted apps. That's kind of like when we started and people had no clue. Then Angry Birds came out in these game-like apps where people were like, "Wow, these guys are blowing up, making millions and billions of dollars selling game apps. Like I want to do that." So then what happened was everybody had a game app. Like I wanna do this, this, or this kind of next thing. Then what happened was it kind of phased down and then Uber came out and literally every single person now wants an Uber-like idea for something else. Mm -hmm. But little do they know, you know, if you're, the cost of development, like on average, you know, like for UI, UX design, looking at design, it's like three to 6,000 for like designing that. Um, then custom implementation with APIs to integrate with other services, like in building up the framework in the back end of that. Like that was coming out to like 20,000. Uh, so I mean, it's, it's like plus 50 to 100. Like you better ha make sure it's a company. That's that's the thing right there is people have app ideas and they think they're gonna make it and it's gonna blow up and it's sweet, but they don't go into it with a business mind thinking this is a company that I'm starting. Even though it's just an app that's sitting and housed right here and there's not this big infrastructure, like you don't have a building or like a gym with like an actual building or equipment, it doesn't matter. Like this is your infrastructure right here that you're building, whether it's digital or physical. So that's still a business that you're running and people have to come into those ideas. So we get, I wouldn't say bad ideas. I would say we get a lot of ideas with people who don't have knowledge beforehand, right? To really understand that it's gonna cost way more. They think it's free when it's really not, or just, you know, make this button and it'll work. Ryan Joseph Kowalkoro, have you explored Unity 3D? You write the app in C Sharp, and it's converted to both Android, iOS, and many others with like a button. Unity 3D, I checked it out. Not really for us yet. No? Okay. Charles, no. Yeah. Charles checked it out, so not for us yet. <laughs> we have to rewrite it. There we go. <laughs> Our whole system will be totally flipped upside down. All right, yeah. Well, then it's not, not there for us yet. Um, yeah, so what we're going to do is, um, that's it for you guys on YouTube. We're going to shut you down and we'll leave Facebook Live going. We'll see you guys in episode 21.